Welcome back, everyone, to the PXP Let's Talk Success podcast. I'm your host, Dre, joined, as always, by my co-host, Paul. Paul, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Hello, everybody. Hey, so um, what do you call cheese that isn't yours? Nacho cheese. There you go. I got one of those. Yeah, I got yeah, one of those. It it's been a while. <laughs> I had to give you a win. You know, that one might be a little cheesy. That was definitely a little cheesy. Yeah. Get it? Get it? That's a double. That's like two in one right there, folks. <laughs> All right, everyone. Today, um, we want to talk about tips and um, tricks, and not necessarily tricks, but smarter ways, I guess, to get started into racing. So, some basics, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, a lot of times, well, it's, I mean, even for like someone like myself, like I, I came to you and I didn't know how to swim mm -hmm. necessarily. Yeah. Um, other than like the guppy lessons, I think you, could, you, you could save your life, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much it. Um, I could save my life, and that was it. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Not not just swimming and um, not just swimming, but running, triathlon, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so where do you? Yeah. So so when people come in, the first thing that we start talking about, I mean, they have a specific goal. They have mm -hmm. a specific reason they're in here. They're they're not good at something, or they want to improve something, and so they come in and say, "Hey, help me do X, or help me prepare for some of it." Mm -hmm. So let's let's start some basics here real quick because there's there's a lot of different training zones out, out there. There's a lot of different terms out there. Let's let's put everybody on the same page with with how I um, see the world when it comes to fitness and their physiology and the different training zones. For me, there's really four zones. Okay. There's there's a recovery zone, light, easy. You can do this all day. There's very little effort. Um, we've got an aerobic zone. This is where most of your long distance your um, uh, uh, long duration stuff. Uh, most of our time is spent is in that zone, the aerobic zone. We've got a threshold or steady state zone, and then we've got the VO2 or the anaerobic zone. Mm -hmm. So let's let's break those down even more. Let's start with the VO2 and the anaerobic. This, these are things that you're doing under two minutes. Um, you know, sometimes we can push that VO2 up a little a little longer in that duration. But if you're really giving a really hard effort you're not going to be able to sustain it for very long so that's that's that type of workout the the high intensity the the stuff that you're really pushing almost to your max if we use a, a rpe scale or a rate of perceived exertion this is a nine or a ten uh, out of ten mm -hmm. that this is hard intensity your threshold your steady state um, this would be something that you're doing on the rp uh, scale that's maybe uh seven to eight sometimes you can push it into nine that that's that's really too high but it's really your seven or eight something you can do um, for a longer duration so this is if you've run a 5k uh, uh, your average pace that would be your threshold pace if you've biked a certain wattage um, that's what that ftp represents your threshold your steady state that sort of thing that's things that you can do it for a certain duration mm -hmm. your aerobic is uh, something that you can do for a really long time, right? So, you know, sometimes up to four or five hours, depending on what's happening uh, on, on your marathons and, and so forth. Some of us hopefully get that aerobic pace and we're done in, in under three hours. But, mm -hmm. you know, for all of us, it's a, a varying length of time. Um, that aerobic pace, that's a, a five, six on an RPE scale. Uh, and then recovery is below that. That'd be your three or four out of 10 effort. And, you know, obviously very light, very, very simple. Most people, when they come in and they're looking at the training, they're thinking they're going to do most of their training at that VO2 or that anaerobic, and they really push themselves really hard, really intensely, and they get that heart rate up, they get that intensity up, and, and they feel bad about themselves because they can't do it very long. Mm -hmm. And they naively think that they should be doing it very long. And so the first piece, piece that people who are getting started, and I'm, hopefully some of our veterans, uh, this is just a reminder or um, an uh, a, uh duh moment right oh we've heard this before mm -hmm. but if you're new to this these are the things that i would encourage you to focus on is go out and, and look at that easy recovery that easy aerobic effort as you're doing things that zone one zone two space the thresholds are things that you're going to do um, at your race intensity mm -hmm. um, usually it's a little above aerobic but obviously depending on what duration your event is it might your threshold might be your aerobic yeah and then the anaerobic is the short bursty stuff. Yeah, for where sure. You get way out of breath. No, yeah, and you've, I'm, I mean, we've meant you've mentioned on previous podcasts about tuning that engine and how important that is. So, 
um, definitely good to remind everyone of that again and into what we're doing. Um, I guess from there, if you want to talk about the fueling part of that. Um, exactly. And the, ne and the next thing that people ask questions about is their nutrition, right? Yeah. So what do, what do we need to, to know? And there's, there's some basics on that part. You need to know how much water you need, how many calories you need, how much sodium you need per hour, mm -hmm. right? And then if you know that number, um, you just have to figure out how frequently you want to drink, right. and then you divide it and you figure out what your routine is. So mm -hmm. let's break that down. Um, if we look at me, I'm a 48 to 60, 60 ounce of water a guy, right? So mm -hmm. I need to bring in, let's use 60 because it's going to be easier math. Okay. If I need to bring in 60 ounces of fluid per hour, and I'm going to drink every 10 minutes, I need to bring in six ounces of fluid an hour. So if I'm at a race and, and I'm going to run at a 10 minute pace, I should get to the next aid station, which are usually a mile apart. Mm -hmm. And at that aid station, I need to grab a cup of water that has six ounces in it. Yeah. And so if I do that every mile, then I'd be right on target to replace my fluids. Yeah. Now, same sort of thing when I'm talking about my calories, my sodium, how many, how many calories do I need? And as a general rule, it's about 150 to 350 is what most people fall into. The bigger you are, the, the harder you're working, the more calories you're going to need, that sort of thing. And so I try to bring in about 300 calories. And so if I'm going to um, use a gel, I'm going to use that just because it's easy because gels have 100 calories. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a gel every 20 minutes. Or if I'm going at that same pace, at 10 minutes to get to an aid station, 10 minutes per mile, Every other aid station, I would take a goo or I would right. take a gel and to get my 300 calories. If we know what my sodium content is, how, how, much, how many milligrams of sodium I need, let's say I need 3,000, that's a really big number, but I need 3,000 milligrams of sodium an hour. Mm -hmm. So I need to take in 1,000 every 20 minutes, or okay. I can break it down and I can take in 500 every 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I've just got to figure out how to do that, yeah. whether that's in a pill form or it's in a uh, crystal form that I've mixed up, mixed up in a drink or whatever I'm doing, right? Mm -hmm. If I do that consistently, if I lay that nutrition plan out like that, then I'll be able to sustain uh, my efforts, right? right. Or, or be able to practice it. And it's, it's just like training for the other sports, swim, bike, run, if we're doing triathlon, you've got to train your belly, you've got to train your gut mm -hmm. to be able to tolerate those pieces and, and ramping up. The hard part is figuring out how much sodium, how much water, how many calories you need. Right. right? So there's some testing that we do here that um, we would put you on a bike, we'd put you, have you running, we would collect your sweat, we'd send it, off, send it off to have it analyzed, and then we would come back with some numbers of here's how much water you need to take in an hour, here's the concentration of sodium in that water, which would give us our milligrams of sodium, and then you simply put that into practice. Mm -hmm. Another way to do that is you simply start guessing. Yeah. Then you start oh, yeah. taking, you start experimenting, you're taking some water. That didn't work, mm -hmm. um, or, that, or that worked. I feel better. A lot of times, though, it's really hard to do that if you're not an experienced uh, runner, and sometimes even for experienced runners, because you're going to feel bad from your performance. Mm -hmm. If you don't have enough sodium, if you don't have enough water, you're going to feel bad from your performance. You're just going to feel a little worse. What, what's that sweet spot, right? So right. instead of having people uh, experiment and guess and um, how many ounces of water they need, how many uh, milligrams of sodium. Let's just test it. Let's right. find out what that number is, and then you put it into play, and it's all great. Yeah, no, and I mean, that's just very important. And you touched on the questions I had for you with that, um, with figuring it out and what to do, because, you know, on our first, on my first outdoor ride with the group, um, I, I, about, I about died, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, and that's how important it is, and, that, and so that's why I wanted to bring it up, because, like, you know, going from, we did, I, well, you guys had like 60 miles that day or something, mm -hmm. um, close to that, and I was along, for, and I just went along for the journey, because. Yeah. Well, and, and to be fair for you, I mean, you were planning on going that Correct, way, right? right, right. And so, um, and you didn't know to bring some calories, you had mm -hmm. some water with you. Yep. Um, we had brought, ridden back to an area, some other people pulled off, mm -hmm. and, and you wanted to go along because you're feeling good on that, right? Right, right? yep. And so we got out a little bit, and, and, and we didn't know that you didn't have calories. We didn't know mm -hmm. that you didn't have as much sodium and so forth, or, or we would have been kinder to you. And right. Been, hey, you probably shouldn't come back out. <laughs> yeah. But when you get out there, you notice that, I think it was about that second hour. We mm -hmm. were coming back about 90 minutes, and a little after the second hour is when yeah, for the, sure. the, the wheels really started to fall off. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we had to 
get some more water in it. We talked right, about and it wasn't on the bike where the wheels were falling off. <laughs> right. So thankfully, yeah, you didn't right. need, you didn't need your training wheels. Right. But the uh, the the body was just shutting down because it didn't have what it needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we got so then after that, you know, I did my sweat test and. Mm -hmm got there and then so from there it's been uphill from that i mean and how much nicer were those rides when you actually right. had the water in the sodium yeah it may, i mean it makes and that's why i wanted to bring this up for the listeners it makes such a big difference when you know exactly what you need when you take that sweat test and i mean just like and per, it makes you feel better I mean, it gives your body the mm -hmm. nutrition you need right um that's why i wanted to go into this fueling because you know we have our engine tuned but if we don't fuel that and if we don't have gas in the tank, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to get anywhere, right? Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's definitely why I wanted to bring it up for people to make sure they have a plan as they go into race season because now is the time to practice it, right? Like, just like you mentioned, um, if you have different gels or different ideas on what kind of gels, because like some people take some nasty gels, dude, <laughs> if you haven't, um, there's some interesting experience. flavors yeah. out there, aren't there? I I, re I was telling people that were did um, a race last year. I tried one of their gels. I was like, I'm I'm never doing anything <laughs> from what I already do now. Which I recommend the Cliff ones um, to everyone, and I think those taste the best. But mm -hmm. now's the time to practice what tastes the best and what you like, and mm -hmm. you know what you're gonna eat. Like I don't, I actually don't do gels. I do the blocks. Um, so that's why I wanted to bring that up for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And what, and what, once you figure out the number of calories and the sodium and, and the water and so forth, to me, it doesn't really matter what you take in. Mm -hmm. Right. As long as you're getting that quantity of things. Yeah. Um, factors for you as an individual come down to taste, mm -hmm. sometimes texture. Some people don't like, um, the chews because it gets stuck in their teeth. Other people don't like the goose because it's, you got to try to wash it down. Right. Um, you know, finding something that you like that meets those requirements is mm -hmm. really the key no yeah absolutely and like we said now now is the time to practice it right because if you get there on race day and you are surprised it might not go well <laughs> right. right it definitely won't so. go well yeah so we've awesome. you know if we have somebody new coming in you know the first place i want to go is making sure that if somebody's getting started with us or on their own just trying to do things knowing what those zones are right mm -hmm. you know, the different intensity zones that's critical so yep. that you're not so you're not overtraining you're actually building a good solid base by staying in that aerobic zone more often than, than the other things. And then fueling your body, those are critical. The third area that I, I uh, talk to people about is they want to just go out and do the sport, right? They mm -hmm. want to just go run or they just want to just go get on the bike or they want to get in the water and start swimming. I think it's absolutely critical as you're getting started that you focus on the form and technique first, mm -hmm. right? Unfortunately, with running, most of us, uh, have either seen running as that punishment. If you're in a different sport, you, you ran because that was mm -hmm. coach trying to punish you. Right. Or you were just told go run and everybody expects you to have a good rule form and technique on your run. Right. Mm -hmm. It, it really doesn't happen that way. If, if you were a basketball or soccer player, you would spend time working on drills and skills and trying to develop as a soccer player, mm -hmm. as a runner, most of us don't do that. We just expect ourselves to be able to go do a run well. Mm -hmm. And we've got a good cadence. We've got a good body position. We know that foot's hitting. We know all those different pieces of our body lean and what our arms are doing, what our trunk's doing. But if we don't break it down, it's really not realistic that you're going to have good run form. Right. right? You're not going to have great technique. And then something bad's going to happen down the road. Um, so the place that as you start doing your training, make sure that as you're doing that aerobic stuff, as you're putting the nutrition in, that you're really focused on that form, on that technique, developing those good healthy habits, those good, healthy um, postures as you're putting speed on it later on. Right, yeah, and um, which is crazy to me because, so when I learned about running form through you and um, through the running program here, it was, I couldn't, I still couldn't put it together on how to run um, more efficiently to make myself um, better and then not to hurt as much, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's where I just wanted you to mention, you know, what you offer, um, as far as like, you know, the resources and then um, other stuff they can do here to figure that out. Yeah, well, there's a bunch of stuff. We do a functional movement screen to kind of see if, if you have the ability to move, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at you know, how well do you move, well, how efficient you're moving, if you've got asymmetries right and left, top to bottom, front to back, uh, how, how well can your body move? 
Mm -hmm. Second is we have um, our classes, which are all geared to functional training and, and functional strength training. And there's a lot of people who will use that phrase and use that terminology and, and you know, from a uh, philosophical place, I, we do things a little differently here in terms of that. We're going to truly focus on your form, your technique, get the little muscles to move, get the sequence of muscles to, uh, to fire in the right order, all those things. So the classes would, would help with those things. And then we actually have some run or gait analysis that we would do some videos of uh, what are you actually doing, what's your form, what's your technique, where do you need to improve, what drills are going to be best for you to improve that, how can you um, improve it in your run, what are some things to think about as you're doing it. So any one of those three things, preferably in that order, mm -hmm. um, uh, are things that we offer here. Yeah, and you even have a video on the YouTube channel, right, about the running form and yep, improvement. Yep. There's so. a PowerPoint presentation that I've narrated over that kind of gives those uh, that, that background, that philosophy, that those examples. For sure, yeah. So if anyone wants to check that out, that's on the PXP Endurance YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. um, from there, I guess I want to go to more of like um, any anything that you want to bring up that you might advise that you found out during your races that worked better than others. Um, for me, so like one thing for me was when I'm when I do my triathlons, I wear low cut socks now instead of the long socks mm -hmm. um, because a lo we have a timing chip and I can't get that <laughs> dang long sock over the timing chip, right? But it's, it saves you seconds mm -hmm. now that I know that, right? So is there anything? Um, you want to bring up with like what you may recommend gear wise or accessory wise for um, racing? Yeah, the um, as, as a general theme, uh, some people want to have new clothing for their race, or they want to try something new on race day, or they they've they've got a special outfit they want to get their picture in on race day. If you haven't practiced in it, don't wear it on race day. So yeah. that would be number one of of don't do anything new on race day. Mm -hmm. um, Along those same lines, if you are used to wearing high socks, I tell you to keep wearing high socks. If yeah. you're not used to wearing thicker socks, don't wear thicker socks. Mm -hmm. and, and if you're not used to going barefoot on the bike, don't go barefoot on the bike. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so practice the things that you want to do on race day. I like to have um, uh, tighter fitted clothes. Mm -hmm. it, you know that. You know, obviously, our tri gear is. Is spandex ish and it, right. it's tight enough for that reason. And you have less things that move around. You have less opportunity for chafing and, and so forth. If you if people do have chase, chafing, the first place I suggest is look at it, what's rubbing. You know, are there loose spots? Are, are they fit you well? We all have different body types and uh, different cuts of clothing fit us differently. See if you've got something that might be uh, less snug in certain areas. Mm -hmm. and th therefore, when you start sweating, it's going to rub and you're going to get some chafing. If you uh, don't see the uh, looseness of your clothing, and but you still get some chafing, um, you're not sure where it is. Obviously, you've got some lubricants that you can use on there. We, I mean, Dr. Doug's is one of the things that, that we have in here that we use that I really uh, think does a great job for preventing some of the chafing and the blister pieces there. There's several other products out on the market that would do the same thing. Um, you just got to be careful. Some of those break down really fast. And so you get sweaty, it gets hot, and they break down, and they're good for the first mile or two, and then they're not there anymore. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you've got something that's going to last uh, the duration of your event. Um, uh, those are the good starts of the things that for sure. a lot of rookies. And then so, and fueling-wise, I wanted to ask you this as well. Is there anything you like to use fueling-wise, um, like brand-specific or... Um, I guess uh, different versions of so like scratch has different products that you can mm -hmm. use infinite has different products you know those are the two i use in my water bottles mm -hmm. um what do you like to use yeah i'm, I'm a tailwind guy i like infinite mm -hmm. as well I like scratch as well um, so it, for me it comes down to what i've been training with lately mm -hmm. and what's my um, taste sensitivity but if i've been training with it a lot and i've got a certain flavor that i'm starting to get tired of I, and i recognize that before the race i, I start switching up the flavors I'm a tailwind guy just because of the amount of calories and it fits my nutritional needs. Gotcha. You, um, is there a particular favorite, uh, flavor that's your favorite? Orange. Orange is your favorite? That's orange. surprising. I tried the orange one before. I like the pink lemonade myself. That's good too. That's so, good but, too. well, that's, um, 
that's infinite, so I don't know if uh, orange is. They've got, a, they've got a lemonade with. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Awesome. Okay. Um, how about maybe any supplements that you like to take before, during, or after the race? Obviously, after the race, there's. I mean, well, I mean, there's a ton that I like to take after the race, at least. Um, anything there? Well, let's let's go post race or, or post workout recovery stuff, right? I mean, okay. So it's. It's important that after a hard workout, after a workout, that you replace um, the calories that you just lost. Mm -hmm. And you've got about a 30-minute window where you need to get some calories in or it's, or it's more efficient to get those calories in. Um, the ratio of carbs to proteins, of proteins to carbs, um, you need three carbs for every protein mm -hmm. you know, in this thing. And so if you can find a beverage, a food supplement that um, is in that range, it's great as a recovery piece, right? So there's a lot of products on the market that target that, and you'll see some of these that are four to one, and they talk about extra protein or extra this or extra that. Um, as long as it's in that ratio of three to one or you know, 3.5 or four to one, you're, you're in a great space. Chocolate milk just happens to be in that mm. great spot. I was so, going to bring it up. Yeah, was... so in, a, in a, um, uh, a financially frugal environment, right? So mm. that's a less expensive way to have a great recovery beverage. And it tastes good. And in it my tastes opinion. good. I like chocolate milk. So you look forward after your workouts. You look forward to having the chocolate milk. It's, mm -hmm, absolutely, yeah. it's super good. Okay, well, cool. Well, um, anything else you want to bring up with that? Yeah, with with other supplements, I I, I get real cautious about supplements and, and talking about things in general because you've got to look at what your body needs, mm -hmm. what your body situation is. Right? Do you have any other things going on? Uh, do you have some iron issues? Do you have some, um, and specifically ferritin issues? Do you have any other energy issues? W you know, what's what else is going on before you start looking into the supplement world? If you've got a deficit and you know you've got a deficit, well, obviously one of the supplements would be to, to do that. So mm -hmm. if you've got a low ferritin level, obviously iron should be part of what you're doing. And with, and with the iron, you've got some calcium and some, some vitamin D things that can go along with that. Mm -hmm. If you've got a, um, there's, there's plenty of other supplements when we start talking about creatine and, and other pieces. I'm not a, a big proponent of telling people just to start taking a supplement just because you're going to have a benefit. Right. Let's get you into training. Let's get you into the, um, your workloads. Let's see where you're at. Let's talk about um, what I call proper nutrition and then see if we need to supplement with, with something else. Okay. Gotcha. Awesome. Well, cool. Well, that's pretty much all I had for um, all that kind of stuff. Um, anything else you want to go over? Yeah. So, I mean, so again, that we, we, we talked about if somebody comes in, we, I want them to know the training zones and where to go, the nutrition, how to put those pieces in, you know, how to have proper recovery, nu nutrition pieces there. As they get started, work on form, uh, their technique as they go into things, whether that's on the swim, the bike, or the run. You know, each of those have form and technique issues, things that are um, going to help you whether it's a, a bike fit on the bike or, or getting a swim coach, having somebody video or have some sort of analysis going on on your swim, same thing with the run. And then as you start to build, once you've gotten past that, as you start to build, um, build your aerobic base first. You know, mm -hmm. And the aerobic base is, it's not going to be the, the cool, fun stuff that you get to show off in terms of, look at my speed, right. um, but you can talk about how much you're building and, and getting this space. Once you've got that aerobic base built, then you start adding your speed and power. Right, So you've got your foundation Mm -hmm. and start building the walls and adding to it. And then when you start painting the walls, so to speak, you start working on race-specific goals. And, and that process or that, that sequence of events used, usually pays off very well. Okay, awesome. Well, good. Well, I like that. I think those are some quick, easy, tangible things that people can do to improve yeah. um, the racing and then um, try out in training. Yeah, and those are, those are great things to do in terms of a sequence. If they're doing it on your own and you do those basic blocks, you're going to be safe. You're going to be able to progress yourself. If you need help beyond that, obviously we, we have that opportunity here with some coaching and strength training. Absolutely. Okay, well, cool. Well, that wraps up that. Um, I want to go into, we're back to would you rather, Paul. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, we're back on that. So I just have a few for you here. Um would you rather have universal respect or unlimited power? Uh, respect. Yep. Also, I knew you were going to choose that one. Mm -hmm. For sure. <laughs> okay. 
Um, would you rather give up air conditioning and heating for the rest of your life or give up the internet for the rest of your life? <laughs> internet. Yeah, absolutely. See ya. <laughs> I could not do without air conditioning and heating. I don't know how people survived in the past. Uh, I could be, I could be fine without the air conditioning, but I need to stay warm. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Would you rather swim in a pool full of Nutella or a pool full of maple syrup? Oh, gross. Mm -hmm. Um, Maple syrup sounds a little less. Um, it's not as thick. I don't not think. As thick, yeah, right. I might be able to actually move that way. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> but, okay, but we're trying to get that off of you afterwards. Oh, I know that um, just doesn't sound good. I don't know. Yeah, Nutella <laughs> might like come off faster, so you might if you're thinking about afterwards, and just because it's thicker, so it might like mm -hmm. block off. Maybe. You know what I mean, both of them are would yeah. be bad options. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> okay. Well, cool. Well, um, that's it for that um i know there's a trip coming up i think possibly soon in uh, north carolina or something mm -hmm. you want to speak on that a little bit yeah a training camp uh, so we've got a triathlon running training camp coming up in uh, uh, mountains of north carolina it's about a seven hour drive mm. uh, it's going to be a uh, april 20th to the 23rd um, i hope there'll be uh we've already got a number of people signed up there's 20 spots i hope that uh, some of our listeners will come join us Yep, absolutely. That'll be fun for you guys. I'm excited to see what happens down there and what goes on with yeah. all the people with um, training down there. Absolutely. So, and, and Dre, I know you would be there, but you're going to be celebrating your mom's birthday that yep, weekend. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, I love your priorities, buddy. I'm sorry. Yeah, and you know what? What makes it kind of worse? I mean, well, I can't. I can't say it makes it worse because it is my mom's birthday. And I, yeah. Um, <laughs> but so like. It's in the Blue Ridge Mountains, right? Yep. And you know that song, I always got to bring up music. Um, but it's that one song, this land is your land, this land is my land, from California to the Blue Ridge Mountains. And it would have been cool to say that I, I like went through the Blue Ridge Mountains and, yep. of that song. We're going to ride the parkway, absolutely. Yeah, I know. So <laughs> maybe next time for me, but... Yep. And there um, will be a next time. Yeah, so we'll do that next time. But I'll be celebrating my mom's birthday and mm -hmm. um, track meet that weekend, too. So hopefully we get a dub there to make up for everything. Yeah, sounds good. So, awesome. Well, that's it um, for this podcast. Um, anyone you want to shout out for this one? Um, just the, all the individuals that continue to persevere through the cold mm -hmm. weeks that we've got here and, and the, the gray skies. I know we're we're looking forward to getting some more sun and some warmth and that and that motivation that comes with spring. Yep. We'll get on the other side sooner yep. or later. Soon. I know that doggone groundhog saw itself <laughs> or whatever, but yep. you know, sometimes animals can be wrong. Yeah. Maybe, maybe <laughs> it was blind. Maybe. It was, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I, hope so. or I hope so. All right. Well, thank you everyone for listening to another episode. We will see you guys next week. See you guys. Hey everyone, it's Dre here. I just wanted to say thank you all for being patient with us and listening to the podcast. We greatly appreciate all your feedback and welcome it as always. Don't forget to send me your questions so I can get those to Paul. We haven't had any in a while, so I just wanted to remind everyone. Lastly, we just ask you that you leave a review, like, and share the podcast with your family and friends. Thank you all so much. We'll catch you on the next